everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Oh, it's Sunday. I need to get a post out. I try to do that once a week. How you guys doing? Oh, we are coming to the final phase of construction on the new frame. So I am uh, looking forward to being able to get a quilt on it. Right now, the robot part, the box that is the robot for the computer, is still attached to the old carriage and I've asked my husband to disassemble that for me. I took the entire frame, the other frame, apart yesterday. Whew! Man! <laughs> that was a job! I was exhausted when I was done. I'm still exhausted. You know, it's getting up, getting down, laying on the floor, reaching underneath, unscrewing everything. And I want to let all of you know, I've had several comments about uh, something to the effect of why would you sell a crappy frame? <laughs> Y'all, you know me better than that, I hope. Uh, I will definitely, I'm going to replace, there's a bad ratchet on it, and I am going to call Grace and see if I can't get a new ratchet for it uh, before I sell it. And then the instructions on how to build it and assemble it, are not good and so I will certainly tell uh, whoever buys this thing the lesson learned but I took the I took the time yesterday to you know whole a goes with screw a and these meet and this is right and this is left and or this is right and this is left <laughs> labeled everything out so hopefully whoever gets it. it. It's a good frame. It'll be fine. It's just it wasn't working for me. So anyway, on to I got a ton of stuff I got to talk to you all about. Somebody had asked me about my thread storage. How do I store my thread? I have all kinds of different thread y'all. I have embroidery threads. I have long arm threads. I have regular sewing threads. You know, when, when you don't just have, I have quilting threads, I don't have just one type of thread, and so it's difficult to keep everything straight. A lot of people will put uh, pegboards on the walls. I don't have the walls. This is a converted back patio. Everything is brick. Everything, I have a whole wall of windows over here. I just don't have the kind of wall space that I could, that I would need. I would need 10 feet. <laughs> to have all those pegboards. So I do a lot of these containers. Like this is a container that I got. It's Orofil. I think since it says Orofil on it, I suspect I bought this as a, uh, it came full of threads, I think. I don't know. I also have big containers like this that I picked up at the store. And so these type of containers are carrying, this is a, uh, Creative options. I'm pretty sure I got this at Walmart, you guys. Pretty sure that's a Walmart find. And so I I have different ones of these for different threads. Some of my threads are kept just in a large one that don't have individual little segments. So all of the... I, and I'll separate my embroidery threads by manufacturer. So I have a whole bunch of this brand, whatever brand it is, in one bucket and a lid on it. Because, uh, as you may know or not, to my new subscribers, welcome. Because this is a converted back patio, I've got two doors on either end and I have two dogs. And they come and go. And they hang out in here during the day when we're not home. So there is a chance for dog fur and I don't like fur on my thread, so I make sure everything is covered, whether it's in a box like this or um, in a regular tub or tote or whatever. But I wanna show you guys something really cool about storing bobbins. So I have many different machine types and I need regular uh, class, is it class M? I can't remember. Your average, sewing bobbin regular sewing machine bobbin they're pretty much all standard i have those i keep those in these little bobbin donut looking things they're pretty cool ignore all my threads i'm lazy when they come you know i try to pull them in tight and tuck them up underneath 
And then I have a larger one for, this is for long arm bobbins. I think these are the size M, long arm bobbins. They're big, uh, so I have those. And then I have on the, the either the Baby Lock Jane or the Brother PQ 1500 SL, those take a different size bobbin. And those are metal. Let's see if I have a blank one here. I have one loose. And it's just, let me see. I'll just see if I can. So here's a standard sewing machine bobbin. Can you see? And here is the metal one that goes in the brother. They're different widths. See that? The standard one is much wider. And so I've got different bobbins for, and I use that, the Brother PQ 1500 for my quilt piecing machine. So if any of you follow Lorena's quilting, Lorena, she doesn't live too far from me. She's my buddy. Lorena came up with this brilliant, brilliant idea for bobbin storage. And I have been using this now. Look at this. So, what she did, let me show you guys. She took a 3 16 dowel, okay? They don't come this short. You have to break them in half. They come like this. This is at Hobby Lobby, okay? This is a 3 16 dowel. She got... It's called ball knob, 16 pieces, one inch, three sixteenths hole. I'll link to all this stuff, all right? I'll link to it on Amazon, so those of you that don't have a Hobby Lobby, you can grab them. And she has a drawer pulls, eight pieces, three sixteenths. If they don't have to be these, you just need two ends that are different, okay? And then what she did was, she glued the little pull is glued to the 3 16th dowel, all right? See, it's glued. And then when I need a bobbin for the long arm, I just unscrew, pull this top off, okay? And then I can just, let's say I want that cream colored one, I kind of hold on to them, and then they all go right back. How about that? Look at that. Y'all, this is so handy. I love this thing. So I have I have one for my long arm bobbins, and I have one for my quilt piecing machine bobbins, and I even started one <laughs> for my regular sewing machine bobbins. These are awesome, and they're portable. I love it. Look at how, I mean, y'all, that's brilliant. I told her she needs to patent that. That is a brilliant idea. So I'm saying right now, if anybody comes up with these, Lorena Quilting did it first, and she's got a YouTube video on how to do that. I'll link to that below in the description box. So anyway, if you guys have a lot of bobbins and you're looking for an easy way, look at all of the bobbins that I stored in just this little tray, and they're all separated by type. I went out and bought that the next day after she talked about doing that. What else did I have to talk to you guys about? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I had bought, I have like over 20 Via Rosa Designs quilt patterns. And for those of you that are unaware or you are new to quilting, Via Rosa Designs is a quilt pattern making company and they make all of their quilt patterns on these little four by six cards, okay? And so what they do is they have a picture of a quilt on the front, and you'll see right here it says Via Rosa Designs, okay? And then on the back, it has the instructions. It does not tell you what type, what exactly what fabric to buy, but it tells you how much fabric you need. And a lot of them more recently that are out, you can use pre-cut. So like this one here, so this one here that is very pretty, it says you need 36 10-inch squares. So a 10-inch package of 
uh, squares, you know, a pre-cut will work. And then it's it's very simple, you know, it's usually one, one or two blocks and then putting them together in rows. And they're all like that. So I had purchased a, a, a photo album to store these in, but the back of it had paper, the back of each page had paper, and I didn't like that. And so I, I went ahead, they had, I, again, I was at Hobby Lobby, I forget the name of this company that makes their, they make all of their uh, photo albums that they have back in the photo album section. Everything was half off. So I got the big photo album and it holds six. And so now I can just flip through my Via Rosa designs. These are really simple, you guys. If you, you know, you beginner quilters, look, these are just so, so easy to put together. Like here's one for a panel. Okay, you can, if you've got a really, like a Christmas panel or something, too simple. So it uses the panel, a border, a border, a background. Very simple. Here's another panel one right here. So these are wonderful. I love making these kinds of quilts. And uh, there was a quilt store that was going out of business and they had all of these on super inexpensive. So I grabbed them. Right now they're in alphabetical order because I just bought the photo album. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I was, oh, I told y'all in another, my last video that I had ordered connecting threads from their most recent catalog. They had a brand new fabric line out. It's called Ocean, well, this is Ocean Currents. This is the name of the pattern. Looks a lot like a Via Rosa Designs. Quilt. See how simple that is? You guys, it's all batiks. Look how pretty. Can you see through the plastic? I don't want to open it up because they'll go everywhere. And Oh, all right. <laughs> see if I can get it open. Oh, these are beautiful, y'all. Very pretty. Very pretty. High quality, too. Very nice. Just gorgeous. I didn't realize it was batiks. That looks like seaweed. How about that? Ocean currents. We have our share of that stuff down here on the Texas coast, that's for sure. So that's a pretty, pretty quilt. Oh, and I was working on, I got all this stuff I wanna show you guys. I was working on, when I went to Creations Quilt Shop up in Kerrville, and they just sent out their newsletter, and I want to thank you, Kathy and Julie, for uh, putting me in your newsletter and pointing everybody toward my channel. That's awesome. I very much appreciate that. That's great. So, I, was, I purchased this Cut the Cake Hexies Quilt Kit while I was up there and it's kind of a combo where where they put together Civil War style fabrics and the modern hexagon quilt pattern. I got all of my hexes sewn and cut. So beautiful. This should go together. Now this is kind of new for me um, sewing these Strange, somebody just texted me. So, this is new for me, but I got all of my hexes cut and done. And then there was a lot, because the, the kit had 20 fat quarters in it. And um, this is way less. You know, I mean, you're gonna get four halves from each fat quarter. Well, there's a lot of fabric left over. So I decided, I took all of the leftover fabric, and there was a bunch, but I took all of the leftover fabric and I made this giant piece. See this? This Each piece is what was left over from the fat quarter. And I took it and I made, and I just sewed them all together like this. Sewed them, oh, they smell good, because I sprayed them all down with uh, Mary Ellen's Best Press. I love that stuff. Here's my favorite out of the whole, see this? Out of the entire bunch. This is called, this is called, I kept this. 
These are William Morris prints, but this is Morris and Bloomsbury, and it's called Pimpernel. I kept this from that fat quarter because if I can find this fabric in an upholstery fabric, I'm going to make, I need, I got a chair in my living room that needs a new look. It's been in my family for over 100 years, and it's been recovered a couple of times, and I want that. Anyway, so why did I do that? Because I am going to put this into the backing of the quilt. So you figure, I think I can get two, it's a 58 inch across. I might can get two vertical stripes. If not, it'll be two horizontal. You know, maybe at the top and the bottom. Gonna cut down the amount of backing fabric I need by whew, probably almost half. So that'll be neat. Plus it uses up all the scraps and it'll be as pretty on the back as it is on the front. So I'm glad, I was glad I thought about doing that because I'm like, you know, what am I gonna do with all this stuff? I do occasionally do applique quilts where I need little pieces. Y'all, my scrap basket is right here behind me and it is like heaping full. I just don't get to them that often. So I thought a better use of the fabric would be to put it into the backing. I also have already cut all 96 of these setting triangles. So that's going to be new for me to put all that together and make that work. But this was all that was left. This. Don't make a mistake. <laughs> this was all that was left. I was like, whoo, better cut that right. <laughs> Not a lot left over. Which is good because sometimes I, I really don't like it when you do have a whole lot of fabric left over. And you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? And, you know, did I buy too much or whatever? Fat quarters are a different story where they want you to use so many different colored fabrics in there. So, but, oh, speaking of quilting, super cute baby quilt. This is from Material Girl Quilts. You new quilters, or if you got a grandbaby on the way, this is just darling. I'll link to it below in the description box. It's called Material Girl Quilts. And all it is, I'll, show, I'll hold this up. So the, the finish size width is 36 and a half. It's just four little pieces of fabric. Look at this. This is for free on this website, okay? So this one and this one are the same. And this one and this one are the same. And then it has a little inner border. This one and this one are the same. And here is the focus fabric. And so if you have a very small piece of fabric that you just love, look at the baby quilt you can make. And you don't have to do a whole lot to it. And on the website it shows it's just straight line quilting. Some are narrow together, some are farther apart to make it interesting, but it's just straight line quilting. No major quilting skills required to make this cute little baby quilt. And you can do it on a regular sewing machine. So you don't need a long arm for that either. I was surfing the webs today and looking for, because we had done the embroider along on the Trapunto table runner for people with very big machine, with bigger machines and larger hoops. So I've been looking around quite a bit for um, patterns that will fit into a 5x7 or a 4x4. That is still something we're going to do for you folks that have you know, max you can do is maybe a 5x7 or a 4x4. Four four. I am looking around for freebie um, in the hoop zipper pouches. Who doesn't have enough of those? <laughs> I know I don't. Okay, this is getting a little bit long, so I am going to wrap it up. I just wanted to show you what I've been working on. It's always something, right? We will talk to you soon. Bye.